before that, Harry and me was deep in the heart of Texas. Pink grapefruit. I miss in America. Ours for the pick. And last year we had a turkey in Phoenix. Cincinnati Harold hired on at the mission to, to bake pies. Harold's pies are legendary. You bought a new shirt and tie in Boise, Chan. And they say my hobo stew is legendary also. You haven't bought a new anything for Christmas as long as I've known you. Yeah, well, this year I changed my mind. All along, you've been planning a stop in Salt Lake. You should be able to find work in Salt Lake in the rail yards unloading Christmas trees. California's warm only a day away. Busiest time of the year, the week before Christmas. Why stop in Salt Lake? You want to go on, Harold? Go on. I'm not holding you back. I might just do that. Shouldn't matter to you anyway, Harold. You always sleep through Christmas anyhow. Is your first Christmas away from home? Yeah, me and Carolina both. This Christmas counts 25 I've been away from home. You'll learn the worst place to be anywhere is Christmas. to unload those trees within the hour. Well, good luck to you. And you too. A Merry Christmas to you. You too. You're up to something. The new shirt, the tie. That's my son. He's living in Salt Lake now. Oh, I should have figured it. How many years you talked about seeing him? Too many. That's why I'm here. I'm going down to the Y and shower and shave and and put on that new tie. What if this reunion don't work? I'm gonna be on the first train out of here tonight. Well, I'll be waiting for you. Pick me up at the mission. Christmas and that boy are a memory. Leave it be. Take the dog. That's it? Today it is. Uh-huh. Bye, Dad. Bye. Dad, what's the capital of Missouri? Jefferson City. Hey, wait up. I haven't heard your list yet. You haven't told us what you want for Christmas. I asked first. Can't policemen ever be with their families on Christmas Day? So what you want for Christmas? Bye, Daddy. Bye-bye, Pumpkin. See you later. Topeka. Well, Slim, Topeka. Omaha, I didn't expect to find you boys so far north this time of year. You eat the chance. Guess we all heard Santa's hired bowls this year. Yeah, well, just shows the old boy knows what he's doing, huh? <laughs> I hope so. Well, I'm, uh, I'm heading into town. See ya. Mrs. Ellen Bottom, aerobics in the gymnasium, geriatrics council meets in wing C. Your key and your towel, Mr. Bransdale. Nutrition in your less stress, more life seminar starts at 8.30 in room 205. It's just up the stairs and to your right. Morning. 75 cents for the shower, 50 cents for the towel. I said good morning. Soap will be 25, and if you need it, the locker is 75. It's the new transient rates. You know, when I was your age, just starting out, we had a saying, courtesy pays big dividends and doesn't cost a penny. $49.50. 
Have a nice day. It's counting on having Christmas off this year. You and a hundred others. My kids want me home this year. You will be. By 4.30, Christmas Day. Lieutenant, you have told me that for the past two years now. You know, we run this department strictly on seniority. Come on in. I have some for you. When you take these gifts to the hospital, take this with you. Tell Laura I'm sorry, but I'm turning in my Santa suit. Lieutenant, you know you become a Christmas tradition for those kids. Well, this Christmas, the tradition is going to be sitting in the sand and sun in Hawaii. Two weeks. Sounds great. That was the first year without our kids at home. My wife wants a change. Lori found me. She'll find another Santa. Maybe she'll get you to do it. And, uh, Grosvenor, next year you will have seniority. And maybe the day off. Take a seat over there and I'll call the officer on duty. What do you want? I'm here to see my son. Okay, the jail is down the hall, up two flights of stairs and to no, your right. He's not in jail. Sergeant Jameson, you want to bail him out? Bail is posted straight down the hallway to your left, my, past the Christmas tree. My son is a policeman. Well, what took you so long to say so? Charles Grosvenor. Officer Charles Grosvenor. Junior. Uh-uh. No way. Not me. I'm too skinny. No, you're not. We could, we could put a little padding right here, a little bit right there. Hey, cut that you. out. You don't have enough padding for me. <laughs> Come on, Charlie. Give me a ho, ho, ho. Sorry. I'm on duty that day. What about Christmas Day? 4.30. It's the best I could do. Well, I'm off at noon. Well, Mrs. Morgan could come over earlier, I guess. Well, good. She and I can get the turkey started. Uh, no. Great. Oh, okay. Here you go, Charlie. Thanks. So, um, what do you hear from San Francisco? Well, they made the offer. And? And I'm thinking about it. Well, it'd be a good opportunity for you. Bigger hospital, more responsibility, more money. There's a lot to be said for that. Well, I told them I'd let them know. When? Right after Christmas. Well, uh, as it happens, I may have the week after Christmas off. I thought it'd be a good time for us to get away. Charlie. Know, together, alone. If I do take the job, they want me to start right away. Oh. San Francisco's not the end of the world, you know? Yeah, yeah, I know, I know. Did you get your Christmas list from the kids yet? Call for you, Charlie. Um, Bobby, uh, an aquarium or a dog, and Kathy's still making her mind up. Hello. He said, what? That he's your father. Yeah, an old guy. He's standing right here. All right, thanks. I'll be right down. Charlie? What happened? He's here. Oh, who's here? My father.
son. What are you doing here? It's Christmas. Where are you staying? Uh, most of the fellas are staying down at the mission. I'll give you a ride. Because it's time. Not by my clock. Time. Where have you been for the last 25 years? I went by the old neighborhood last summer. And found out where we were. You keep sending your cards. I learned your wife had died. Look, if it's money you want... No, I'm not here for money. I work for a living. I pay my way. I always have. Here because I want to spend Christmas with you. You haven't earned the right. I want to know the grandchildren I never met. I did not invite you here. Not many more Christmases left, Charlie. Christmas will be better than last. Will Lori be here? Yeah, about noon. Mrs. Morgan will be over even earlier, and you guys can get a start on the turkey. What are you giving Lori for Christmas? I'm still making up my mind. Did she get the job in San Francisco? Uh, no, not yet. Will she? What's Lori giving you? I don't know. You don't ask what someone's giving you for Christmas. Yeah, well, I do. Dad, when are we getting the tree? Soon. How soon? A couple of days. Last year, we had to wait until the day before Christmas. Dad, I like Lori, but I miss Mom a lot. Why can't Christmas be the way it used to be? I know, baby. I know. Say, I didn't warn you. I heard you're the first son. You could have saved yourself trouble if you'd have listened. Get off my back, Harold. Harold's rule of the road. Knock it off, Harold. A hobo can go anywhere except home again. Let go, chance. I thought he'd ask me to stay. Dad, Lori's here! Hi. You had supper? Yeah, I had something at work. What do you think? Charlie, it's beautiful. Yeah. Well, if business keeps up this way, I might just hang up the uniform and do this full time. Ex steel worker becomes successful woodworker? Sounds pretty good to me. gonna get to meet your dad. Well, he thought wrong. Oh, excuse me. Uh, he thought I was gonna invite him to stay for Christmas. Yeah, well, what's wrong with that? <sighs> My father and I don't need to hurt each other all over again. Oh, Charlie, you said that was a long time ago. Which is exactly where it's gonna stay. It's not your family. I can take a hint. 
No, I didn't tell the kids. Well, don't you think Bobby and Kathy have a right to meet their own grandfather? I sent my father away. You didn't answer my question. Don't shut me out. Look, it's between my father and me, okay? No, it's not okay. Oh, you sure don't make it easy for me, do you? I'm trying to get to know the whole Charlie. I mean, how can we ever talk about the future if you're so unwilling to talk about the past? Those kids upstairs have a right to meet their grandfather. Good night, Charlie. Kids are already asleep. Oh, good. <sighs> Police work calling you out, Charles? No, ma'am. You sounded very urgent. No, that's uh, personal business, kind of an important errand. Chance Grosvenor. Never heard of him. Besides, even if we did know him, he got you marked for a cop. He told me down at the mission he was headed this way. He's my father. Well, I for one need some California sun. My bones ache here. No, you've been complaining about cold since I met you. Get to California, you complain about the heat. River got he spotted us. Come on. This used to be a safe yard. Yeah, the world used to be safe too. You don't count on nothing except your pounds. Come on, this way. Dad carried me into my sister's room. Well, good morning, Bobby. I'm Kathy. Morning, Kathy. Coffee? Ah, uh, yes, thank you, I would. I recognized a good deal of that furniture up in your room, Bobby. I made some of that for your father when, when he was your age. I gotta be going. You just tell Bobby and Kathy whatever it is you want to do. Come here. When do we get the tree? Ah, uh, tomorrow. First thing. Granddad can stay that long. 
Sleeping? The best trees are down at the rail yard. Last shipment before Christmas came in yesterday. I'll be home by six. What would you like for breakfast? This year on a big tree, to the top of the ceiling. Uh, some toast, uh, juice, and uh, more coffee, please. I always made choosing the tree a very special time. When you were home. Well, today I am home. The whole day, with both of you. I'll go get all my uniform. What's a hobo? A man who works as he travels. couple of quarters in your shoes. Good for bus rides and telephone calls. How come you sleep with your shoes on your chest? Well, because that way they're as close to me as if I was wearing them. Good shoes are important to a hobo. Good shoes and a good road to travel them with. Okay, then you go. There you Thank are. You. Because you're sick or dying, are you? <laughs> no, Bobby. I'm here because it's Christmas. You sure? I'm sure. Why did you leave home? Well, Kathy, think of it this way. Long time ago, there was this man. You. Yeah. Me. Growing up, there wasn't a thing in this world that I was afraid to take on. I did less than well in anything I ever tried. I was a salesman, a traveling salesman. Came a time for change. There's too many changes for me. How much has your father told you about me? He never talks about you, but he keeps your postcards and your pictures down in the basement. Bobby and I knew what you looked like right away. Just admiring your dad's work down here. We're getting Bobby. the tree tomorrow morning, and I told Dad you'd be here to help us. Oh, that's the boy. That's great. Good, good. insisted he stay on and help with the tree. You were right. Kids deserve to see their granddad. Carolina, Carolina Cajun, Merry Christmas. Two dollars. Yeah, my grandkids. Stop the other night, uh, 
I didn't mean to shut you out like that. I apologize. Apology accepted. By the way, if you do take that job in San Francisco, I just wanted you to know that a team of wild horses and I are going to come there and drag you back. Yeah? Yeah. Scotch fine. Keep on going. Which did you do the longest? Salesman or hobo? Salesman. There they are. Stay right there. What? Just watch. I'm going to wind up with the most expensive tree on the lot. Douglas fir. Douglas fir, that's why. Ah, yeah, ah, this is more like it. No finer or more beautiful tree ever grown. Sometimes they grow as high as 100 feet tall. Costs a lot. Well, at my age, I'm past putting a price on Christmas. You know, last year we, uh, we had scotch pine. Yeah, well, it's a good choice, but this year they're a little dry. Over here, of course, they have the uh, nobles. Oh, no. That's who picked over. Blue spruce. Too much sap. Well, I have heard that the Douglas fir does give you more tree for the money. Lasts twice as long, too. Mm -hmm. Sold. Made a good choice, son. Ah, put that away. Come on, kids, lend a hand. No, 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 no. Hold, Hold on, man, we gotta Charlie. pay. No, wait a minute. I do believe this is the best tree we ever had. Here we go. So Charlie tells Grab me you used to be quite money. the salesman. I've oh, got money. I could have paid for that tree. Charlie, uh, hold up there, will you? Look, son. I carved these heads out of apples during the harvest season up in the state of Washington. When I was your age, he carved new decorations every year. Yeah, I've been carving and whittling since I was your age, Bobby. Well, easy to see where you get your talent with wood. The kids, come here, take a look at this. This is a hobo knife. See, this blade here is for carving and whittling, and that one there is a can opener, and this here is a scissors. See, for sewing, sewing on buttons and the like. <laughs> hey, Charlie, remember that Christmas turkey I won at Oliver Henry's hardware store in Chester, Pennsylvania? The one you bought a ticket for on the Pennsylvania Railroad. Yeah. Hold on, you two. Yeah. A ticket for a turkey on a train? True story. What happened to the turkey? We sat in the seat beside me all the way home to Pittsburgh. The grandmother and I were there to meet the train. When I stepped off that train, I was leading a 16-pound tom turkey. Yeah, with a collar around his neck and a string. <clears throat> and I said to your father, sharpen up the axe, son. Oh, boy. I looked at him. He looked back down at me and he said, well, you do want turkey for Christmas dinner, don't you? <laughs> you cut its head off? I'm sure scared I was going to have to. But you just laughed at me and told me not to worry and led the turkey away and put it in a taxi cab. Oh, a turkey in a taxi cab? I swear, and there were two nuns in the cab. <laughs> I'd, I'd heard that the nuns up at uh, St. Rita's home for wayward girls were in need of a Christmas turkey. So thanks to me and that bird, their dream came true. Tell us another story. Yeah, come on, just one more. Oh, well, now, let me see, let me see. Well, now, there was that uh, year that Ned Tompkins over at the barbershop was going to play Santa Claus at the Elks Club Christmas party. So he called me up that morning and said, Chance, you got to help me out. you got to play Santa Claus. <laughs> I said, why? What's the matter, Ned? And he said, well, tell you the truth. I went to a party last night, and I got there a little too early, and I stayed there a little too late. <laughs> <laughs> what happened to Ned Tompkins? Oh, he was run over by a reindeer. <laughs> yeah. No, 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 that's the truth. Watch. But what's the matter? Come back in. Really? That yep. is the really? absolute cross my heart yeah. and hope to die true. Uh, don't you believe me? He's a very proud man. Oh, he never lacked for pride. But he wanted to buy that tree. You know, he had out that leather purse. You just brushed him off. I guess I was too busy thinking about just how easily he conned me into that tree. Well, I think he's really trying to get to know you, so you should give him equal time. Well, the man I still see is the one who left 25 years ago. Charlie, find out who he is now, why he's here. I've <sighs> already told you the only reason he's here is for the kids. Try, Charlie. The way they're taking to him, he could be Father Christmas himself. Father Christmas? But you're right. What? He's perfect. He's what? He's Santa Claus. Well, no, at, no. The, at the party, no, at the no. children's party, no, he I could... don't think so. <sighs> 
So I took the turkey into the dining car for lunch. I just had a sandwich. He had a chocolate sundae. No nuts. <laughs> Are you all alone when you ride the rails? No, no. I have friends. Who? Oh, the Topeka Kid, Biloxi Slim, Omaha John Boswell. My best friend is Cincinnati Harold. They all sleep with their shoes on their chest? Absolutely. <laughs> What do you eat when you ride the rails? Well, a hobo stew. What else? <laughs> What's hobo stew? Oh, well, now, that's a secret. But I'll teach you how to make it one day. It's just plain, stick to your ribs, delicious. You remember that Sunday we drove up to Park City? And you were yeah. determined that you were going to uh, <laughs> teach the kid from Pittsburgh how to ski. Oh, boy, it wasn't easy. I fell down a lot. Yeah? Yeah. When it comes to telling you how I feel about you, I, uh... I'm just as clumsy. Charlie, I've been thinking this, um... This move to San Francisco could be the best thing for both of us. You made up your mind, huh? Well, you have priorities. You have the kids, two jobs, you had a wife you loved very much. This time you're not answering my question. No. No, I haven't decided yet. I only know you just let me get I so... I don't want you to go. We have been seeing each other for a year, and I think we've fallen in love, but, Charlie, we are standing still. Just when I think I'm getting close to you, you close me off. You kids haven't told me what you want for Christmas yet. I want a dog. She wants a piano. Bobby! Ow. <laughs> but she hasn't told Dad. Oh? Why not? Why haven't you told him? I was taking lessons. My mother died. So I stopped playing. I think about her a lot. I told Dad if I can't have a dog, I want an aquarium. Well, if you don't tell your father you want a piano, he can't buy one for you. Maybe I'll tell him. Maybe I won't. Yeah. Night, Kathy. Night, Bobby. Night. Did you really buy a train ticket for a turkey? Now, could I make up a story like that? <laughs> I think you could. <laughs> Where are my shoes? I'd wait until morning to tell them goodbye. You know damn well they want you to stay. You're making sure they want you to stay. All right, I am. But right now, I'm waiting to hear it from you. You want to stay? Stay. You're the one I came to see. I'm waiting to hear it now. Yes or no? I want the vote to be unanimous. If I tell you to go, you know who the kids are going to blame. Me. I'm not talking about I'll the be kids. the fall guy. I'm talking about us. No, I'm not going to tell you to leave. You came for Christmas, you stay for Christmas. But you just remember this, when it's time for you to leave, you're the one who's going to have to face your grandchildren. I'll pour that in you, stir, huh? There we are. Ah. All right, and now the cabbage. Well, let's not forget five pounds of Polish sausage. That's right, and it's a cabbage, 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 cabbage. What do you do with the cabbage, huh? I couldn't find the cabbage. Oh, she no. hates cabbage. Oh, yeah. 
If it's so good, why isn't he here to eat his own cooking? He's working down in the basement. You can only cook hobo stew outside in a garbage can. <laughs> ah. Well, I'll just uh, take him a bowl full of his own medicine. I'll take it. No, here. no, no. Thank you. I wanted to take it to him. Daddy wants to talk to him. How do you know? Because I know. No, why? All you do is ask questions. You're such a geek. At least I didn't hide my cabbage under my sausage. Yeah, who's there? Bringing your supper down. Now, hold it, hold it. Just a second. I, I wish I could tell you what I'm up to, but I won't. You know, in my shop at home, I had my lathe just where you have yours. You're doing fine work here, son. Oh. Rah! Hobo stew. Just plain... Vitamin packed, stick to the ribs, hobo stew. Yeah. You know, Bobby and Kathy have never eaten carrots. They have never eaten onions. Has Kathy tried the cabbage? They have never had beer, which uh, only goes to show what a liking they've taken to you. <laughs> I don't want them hurt when you leave. You think I want that? Well, the only way you've ever wanted to be close to anybody is on your own terms. Always coming back and never staying. Always thinking of yourself. My father, the hobo, who ran away from the real world. You were always running. Always looking for the easy way out. What do you know about my world? How do you know how I felt? Look, I didn't come down here to pick a fight, all right? Yeah. You could have fooled me. You say you always work wherever you go. Well, I got a job for you. You do so well with Bobby and Kathy, I'm sure you'll work out just fine as Santa Claus. Santa Claus? Yeah, for well, Laurie and the kids over at the hospital. Look, I am not playing Santa Claus, not in front of a bunch of kids. We will talk about this in the do. morning over the finest breakfast you have had in years. I will not play Santa Claus. My kind of place, Charlie. All those years I was traveling, this was my kind of place. Look, if there's going to be any talk at this meal about playing Santa Claus, forget it, nope. because you're taking the job. Won't hear it from me. Always used to say the food was better than the counter. Yeah. 25 years ago. Those were my salesman days, remember? Always on the road. Trains, mostly. <laughs> Pittsburgh to Philly, south to Washington, D.C., north to Trenton, far west is Cleveland. Everything from war surplus canteens and rubber rafts, bats, balls, hula hoops. <laughs> Mom said you sold it all. <laughs> oh, I sure did. 25 years ago. That was the last time. I remember the, the home office. Home office, Charlie, where all of us salesmen used to gather once a month, exchange ideas, swap stories, collect our bonuses. Johnny Akers in from the South, Bill O'Grady in from New York, Buck Marshall from the Far West. We were the road. Territory. You know, three years ago, I lost my job at the steel mill. 25 years ago, you lost your salesman. You ran away. I didn't. Why? Well, it started small enough. I was selling baseball gloves. These gloves were genuine Texas cowhide leather. 
Only thing was, a uh, big change was selling those same gloves, too. Pretty soon they were buying up all the mom and pop stores who were my customers, people I sold to. Everything was moving out to the shopping centers. Downtowns died. I was a hotel man in a motel world. More coffee, fellas. No, just check, please. Friday nights, we got you home. Friday night fights on TV. Seems you like Ruby Goldstein was always the referee. <laughs> We'd get you for weekends. And early Monday morning, you'd be gone. One week, white shirts were still hanging in the closet. Ties are on the rack. All the shoes nice and neat in a row. One hat missing. Panama straw, summertime. Mom said you were trying a different line, new road, different territory. Yeah, I remember all those years I tried to come back, even if it was only for a week at a time. The trouble was, uh, each time I came back, it became more difficult. Why? Yeah. Why did it become more difficult? In my day, it was the man who was the provider for the family. I'd just become a out of work salesman. I'm a hobo. I worked. I sent money home. Hey, I was just a kid. I was home. You were gone. You think I wanted to put my arms around money? Don't you think that that hurt me, too? All I was trying to do is provide for you and your mother as best I could. Times changed. You were just too damn proud to change with them. I'd lost my life's work. Yeah, the proud salesman, the man who was the territory. No, I had no territory. I had no profession. And when they were gone, your pride sent you running. Running me, no. And never. when you did, you left us behind. Do you think I wrote, sent those postcards and pictures home because I was trying to leave you and your mother behind? All I knew was that I'd failed your mother and I was failing you. I told him, no way, no way am I going to play Santa Claus. Well, somebody forgot to tell me. Yeah, so he invited me out to breakfast. Oh, that must have been nice. I never had a better breakfast or a worse time. <laughs> Humbug. First thing you know, he conned me into playing Santa Claus. Here, try the whiskers. Where, where'd he learn all that sort of stuff? Oh, you hold still? He tricked me. He said he was coming over here so he could play Santa Claus. Well, I'm in charge and I wanted you. Charlie's too skinny. Now, here, try on this hat. You think so much of my son, why didn't you do something about him? Sit down, I'll fix your boots. Look, he's a widower with two children. Now, if you two are on your way to falling in love, why don't you do something about it? Whatever is to be worked out, if it is, Charlie and I will work it out in our own time, in our own way. Hey, the kids are ready. Uh, we've told them not to throw things at you this year. Throw things at Santa Claus? Yeah, and we've tried to get rid of all the bubble gum. Bubble gum? Look, what is yeah, this? Yeah, you know, it gets in the beard. All right, here's the sack. We're ready to go. Oh, gentle Jesus, meek and mild. If Harold could only see me now. This is Heather. Hi, Heather. 
Sugar pudding, girl. Now, you look over there in that camera there and let him take a picture. And here's Richie. Well, Richie, how are you? You got a list for Santa Claus? There, I'm sure we must have something in that sack for a good little boy like you. Now, let's see what we have. Oh, oh, what are you doing? Come on, Richie. I get Christmas Eve off. How about lunch? Sure, it sounds good. About one o'clock. Okay, I'll pick up. You know, until he showed up, I had Christmas planned around the kids and you. Oh, Santa needs his help. Mm. Bye. See you tomorrow. Okay. Oh, boy, do I mean ever again. For someone? You. I want to ask you a question. Well, that's fair enough. Why can't you and Daddy be friends? Well, you remember that little conversation we had that day at the skating rink? Why you became a hobo? Yeah. Well, this is the only family I have left. And I tried to move back into it. But your father wasn't ready for me to move back into his life. His, or yours, or Bobby's. But Daddy wants to love you. I know he does. I told you, he saved your pictures. Now it's my turn to ask a question. Fair enough. How do you feel about Laurie and your father? I like her, and so does Daddy. A lot. Now, oh, good. Because I think your father and... Maybe one day you and Bobby will need her in your life more than you need me. When are you leaving? Morning after Christmas, I'll be gone. Before you're even awake. Now that you know where we live, you'll come back every Christmas, won't you? I'd like that. I'd like that very much. I'm glad I waited up for you. So am I. Night. Tonight. New shoes? That's all you could think to get him? What else do I know about him? <laughs> he travels. Well, what else have you two been talking about for the past three days? Oh, the way we were, why he's here. And? And he's brought up a lot of old feelings. Not all of them about him. About Karen? change. Not guys like me. I worked in Nels. Steel's what we knew. And all of a sudden, one day, we're out of work. And I mean for good. You have any idea what that's like? No. I was afraid. 
was the work going to come from. And I was scared to death to leave the city and neighborhood where I'd been born and raised. And married. And married. Karen and I got married right out of high school. We, uh, we were so much in love, we just couldn't wait to get married. Let's move over to the I want to see the doggies. Yeah. Come on, come on, you girls. Stay with Mother. <clears throat> it, was, uh, it was her idea to, to move west, you know. I, uh, I was always pretty good with my hands, and I thought I could open a small furniture-making business. And Karen died. Such small dreams, you know. Place to live, work, place to bring up the kids. There's this uh, tavern near the mill. A place where all the guys, we used to go and have a beer after work every day. Nowadays, that place is full all day long with guys who are my friends. To a lot of them, yesterday's going to be forever. Anyway, one day I was looking at myself in the mirror behind that bar. And I saw my father. And that scared me. <laughs> that scared me because right then I wanted to run. I wanted to run and just keep running. Just us, just, just me and the kids, we came out here. Four days on an interstate and we'd left an entire lifetime behind. That was the past, Charlie. Yeah. This is now. And now I've got you in my life. And you make a difference, lady. I want to reach out again. Let it go, Charlie. I trust myself. Let it all out. I want to love again. It's hard, you know? Yeah. Yeah, it's hard. said we could buy him anything from a pair of socks to a TV set. He bought himself a TV set last year. Such a boy. Should have made a list. You were supposed to ask was not. All right, come on, come on, come on. You were. Was not. Two, you know, stop that. Get in there. Come on, Bobby. Be nice to your sister, will you? Why don't you use your imagination? We tried that last year. Yeah, and what happened? Socks and a shirt. Boring. You're boring. All right, all right, all right. Come on, come on, over here, come on. Try it. You sure? Well, it's only Christmas Eve. Plenty of time to change your mind. Hey, what have you got there? That one's mine. Yeah, what makes you so sure? He brought Daddy here and showed him. Oh, <laughs> Where's he now? Well, now we're going to do something special. Be your father. All right. Great. Just the three of us. <laughs> okay, Bobby. This is for you. Uh, yeah, that's for you. Come on now. Put the money in, Bobby. Come on. And don't forget. When the light comes on, everyone says cheese. 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 Where are we? Yeah, well, you'll see. My best friends are here. I thought this would be a nice Christmas present for your father from you and Bobby. Huh? Come on, come on, Bobby, inside. Merry Christmas. 
lots of endings and lots of saves. Hi, boys. Hey. Pleased to meet my grandchildren, Bobby and Kathy Grover. Hi. Hey. Mr. Topeka, Biloxi Slim, Omaha John Boswell, and over there, that's Cincinnati Harold. Hi. Hi. How soon are we leaving, Chance? Day after tomorrow, Harold. California, here we come. <laughs> yeah, 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 yeah. I know you didn't bring these little peanut heads over here to cook turkeys, Chance. Yeah, so what's happening? If I know him, it's got something to do with Christmas. Well, you're right. These young ones here want you to spend Christmas with them. Count me out. It was Granddad's idea. It figures. Some more stuffing, Omaha. Uh. Don't you want to hear what it is? Granddad says the best present Bobby and I can give our daddy is for you to have Christmas with us. Sorry, I go to bed Christmas Eve and sleep right through Christmas. Day and night. We want to give you to our daddy as a Christmas present. We didn't know what to get him. I'll say. Now, I want my son to have a big family around my Christmas, and I guess you guys are going to have to be it. Yeah, I don't know. Oh, now, look, when was the last time we could do anything for kids or our family, except maybe send a, a card in the mail or make a telephone call? Harold, you think you're different because you take to your bed at Christmas. Well, let me tell you, oh. for all of us, Christmas is the lonesomest time of the year. Granddad says you'll cook the pies. You don't cook pies. You bake them. Ah. Now, Topeka, you'll do the, uh, the vegetables. Okay. Slim, you do the biscuits. Yeah. And uh, Omaha, the salad is all yours. Yeah. I'll do the mashed potatoes and the gravy. And Harold, you're in charge. Here's the address. One o'clock. Don't be late. If old Harold have anything to do with Christmas, I'll go along just to watch. <laughs> I'll think on it. Yeah, well, just so long as you don't sleep on it. Hey, come on, you kids. Come on. We need to get home. We have important work to do. We don't want to be late for church. Bye. Bye. And so I take this opportunity to wish you all the blessings of this most joyous holiday season. And I would like to remind those of you who are newcomers, or those of you who have strayed or stayed away, or those of you who only come on Easter and Christmas, or <laughs> those of you who are only here because your parents or grandparents dragged you under the threat of receiving nothing but a lump of coal in your stockings, we welcome you as much as our regulars. We wish you a very Merry Christmas. I never finished my shopping until Christmas Eve. Forth, to get the job done. Son, and wrapped him in swaddling <clears throat> clothes and laid him in a manger because there was no room in the inn. My friends, these words from the Gospel of St. Luke should serve to remind us of those who are less fortunate than ourselves.
for the state of Pennsylvania, where you were born. And this one's for Utah. Yeah, where you live now. Now you'll have to fill in the rest for me. <laughs> it's beautiful. Thank you. Well, you look so sweet, Art. This one's from all of us. Well, will you look at the size of that? <laughs> to Grandpa from Bobby, Kathy, and Santa Claus. <laughs> well, what have we here? Well, I certainly can use these. Oh, yes, indeed. Oh, will you look at that? Yeah, what do you think of your old grandfather, huh? Well, you kids certainly know what your old granddad needed. One more. I'm afraid you're going to have to wait until you get back from work for yours, Charlie. <laughs> How did you know I always buy myself a pair of shoes at Christmas time, huh? It was Dad's idea. All we know is you're leaving tomorrow. Here. Dad, when do we get our presents? Well, part of Christmas is surprises. What did Laura give you? I don't know yet. I gotta be going. I will be back by 4.30. No. And don't worry about the turkey. You left Christmas dinner in good hands. The best. <laughs> you all know how I feel about Christmas. I'd rather be in bed. Chance needs our help for Christmas. We got a friend. It's important to him and the grandkids. So, we remember our manners and we watch our language in front of kids, ladies, and the cop. Today, we do whatever our buddy Chance asks us to do. All right, get out your bus fares. When they're ready. You need some more stuffing, Laurie. All right. Granddad, yeah. potatoes are ready. Be right there. I'll give you the things that wouldn't be enough power. Oh, I like your shoes. Yeah, my traveling shoes. Charlie gave them to me. Now, there, right over there in back of you, you'll find the uh, pepper and the uh, celery salt and the oregano and the dill for that stuffing of yours. Thank you. What's your specialty? Thoroughly mashed potatoes and the gravy that goes with them. Mm. All right, I will get started on the dressing. I, uh, I'll be leaving here tomorrow. Yes, I heard. Look, it's, uh, it's none of my business, but, uh, if Charlie asks you to marry him, say yes. You're right, it's none of your business. 
If that were my dressing, I'd put a tad more pepper in it. You're not only a sentimentalist, you're a romantic. <laughs> Most people would say a romantic was a fool. Mm -hmm. So what's your role in this family? Hmm? Where's your responsibility? Oh, it's too late for that. Oh, is it? Who told you it's too late? Well, nobody has to tell me. Now, if you're going to do that dressing, you're going to need some more herbs. No. Me. I will make my dressing my way. I was only trying to help. You were trying to change the subject. You know, these past few days, I blamed Charlie for running away from you. But now I think you're the one who's really running. Now, this is none of my business, but um, maybe it's time to stop. Special delivery. I... I, uh, I thought it might be nice to have a few friends over to dinner. Maybe you'd like to ask him to give us a hand over here. Oh, sure, sure. Come on, boys. Lend a hand here. What in the world we got here? Now, young man, I believe that he was tops on your list. Yeah. 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 That's nice. Oh, thanks, Dad. <laughs> Just the one I wanted. <laughs> now, young lady, the top of your list. Had to borrow a paddy wagon, but uh, we got it here. Thank you, Daddy. Thank you so much. I love you. You're welcome, baby. Well, come on, boys. Come on. Give a hand here. Yeah. Oh, guys. Uh -oh. All right. What is this, a uh, few friends over for dinner? Yeah, well, it's, uh, it's been so long since anybody, uh, much less a family, has shared Christmas with them that uh, uh, Kathy and uh, Bobby thought that they would like to uh, share Christmas with someone who is less fortunate than they are. I see. It's kind of like a... Like a present for all of us. Mm. One day. Today. It was Kathy's idea. Granddad, it was your idea. And a good one. Every kid should have a dog. I haven't had one since I was a kid. My sister had a piano she played every day. Darkest, thunder and lightning this night I'd ever seen on the rails in 30 years. Down we came on that runaway freight out of Rat Town. Right into the teeth of that storm. Wherever we went, I was always pleased to come home. You always live in Utah, Gladys? Born and raised here. Someday you should take the time to do more than pass through, Chance. We always pass through. If, uh... If you took the time, I'd be pleased to show you the state. We never stay anywhere more than a few days. Hmm? Summer days in the cool of the mountains, year-round fishing. Well, certainly something to think about, isn't it, Harold? Pass the peas. Ladies and gentlemen, before we get to Harold's legendary pies... They're uh, not ready. I have an announcement to make. Ladies and gentlemen, when I was a boy, I heard my father say about my grandfather that uh, when a man got older, he always had this wish to be a kid again, to be young, and, and wish for something he never had, never could have. Now, if my father were here to talk today, I'd say to him that it was tougher as time goes on to know not so much what you didn't have as a boy as what you wanted for your own son. Never got around to putting under the tree on Christmas morning. 
And Lord knows I've had as much time to think about that as most fathers, probably more than most. So without further gabbing, why, Charlie, this is the gift I had in mind to give you over 25 years ago. It's late, but I'm sure you're not too old to enjoy it. All yours, Charlie. Days we've uh, had our talks, but uh, this reminds me of something we haven't talked about. That's something I think we both remember. When I was young, I remember a lot of families used to go down to the airport and watch the planes. But in my family, we always went to the train station. And if there's one memory that stands out in my mind, it's. Uh, being lifted up onto my father's shoulder to watch a long, long freight pass by and waving to the engineer and watching him wave back. <sighs> Thanks, Dad. Thanks for remembering. Merry Christmas, everyone. Merry Christmas. One more Christmas tradition left for all of us. I thought Kathy and I might walk over to that beautiful piano and... Will you join me, Kathy? And we'll sit down and sing some Christmas carols. Uh, I'm sure we can get even old Harold to join in. I'm sure. Well, yeah, I'm ready if you are. Jack went up for Father Christmas. Yeah. If it hadn't been for you, I'd have sent him away. But the father I'm seeing tonight's the one I always wanted to remember. I'm glad. And the Charlie I see tonight is different. Could be the same fellow who's still getting next week off. The one who thought it would be a good idea for us to get away? Together, alone. Must be the one I'm in love with. I love you. I need you. I'll stay, Charlie. Stay, as in? As in I'm not taking the job in San Francisco. As in being with you next week. And a week after? And one after that. <sighs> Merry Christmas, Charlie. Merry Christmas. I told of 
you were here, you've got to sing, Harold. My job is pies, only pies. I'm afraid the gentleman is mistaken. If you'll excuse me, I'll be taking them out of the oven. In any case, Mr. Cincinnati, Harold, Merry Christmas. Same to you, Gladys. Come on, let's sing. I didn't want to wake them. I'd figures. That's the way it always was. I'd go to bed, and when I woke up, you'd be gone. Mom said that uh, after I went to sleep, you always came in and kissed me goodnight. I didn't have the heart to wake you. Wish you had. I never did get to thank you for the tree. Oh. Douglas fir. You always knew how to pick the best. I guess I'm too up on you, huh? I wouldn't let you buy that tree and... Uh... You suckered me into playing Santa Claus. Yeah. Well, tomorrow morning the kids and I'll drive you down to the train yard. Oh, thanks for that, yeah. I've ordered a cab. Well, that figures, too. Mom and I would always meet your train, but the leaving was always up to you. Charlie, tonight is good night and goodbye. Both at once. I want to thank you and the kids and Laurie for a really wonderful Christmas. Still up to you. That part hasn't changed. Looks like Christmas was real good to you this year, Chance. Yeah. Yeah, well, we missed you yesterday. We were celebrating. We found work. We're staying. We just came by to say goodbye. Well, congratulations. Good luck to both of you. And to you. Yeah. Ready, boys? Yeah. yeah. Now, you take care. Bye -bye. We'll see you next Bye -bye. time we're through. You bet. You. All right. Good take time. care. Bye -bye. Get your coats. 
<laughs> There's turkey, dressing, mashed potatoes, and trimmings I had since I was knee high to my grandma. And them biscuits of yours were downright legendary, Slim. <laughs> what about the pies? The piano playing was the best I heard at Christmas. Isn't that what I'm preaching Selena's last year? The pies, damn it. I'd compare the singer to a wild baby, wouldn't you, Chance? Uh, yeah. And about the pies, my pies. Pies? I am going to talk about those pies until you do us some singing. <laughs> <laughs> Chance Grosvenor. Any of you guys seen Chance Grosvenor? Come on, kids, let's go. We're too late. Our goodbyes. We don't want to say goodbye. We want you to stay. A week ago, you were out of my life. Then you came back. Chance! Now you're leaving again. Please stay with us. Chance! I really want you to stay. I'm not used to staying in just one place. You're just beginning to know your grandchildren. Maybe I don't want to have kids around well, me all the time. Maybe they'll get tired of you. California chance, it's time. Charlie, you got Laurie. A new start, a new beginning. I want you to stay. For a while, you can leave anytime you want. Chance! said I ran. Asked me why. I never really answered you. But you were right, son. It was pride. Too much pride. Twenty-five years of pride that, that kept me from you. And I'm almost let it happen again. But not anymore. I love you, Dad. You, son. I'm staying. You've been away too long. Fifteen years, Chance. You and me. We are the road. I'm gonna give it a try. They're my family, Harold. You'll be right behind me. There's plenty of time. I'm not too proud to die. California. Something to keep you warm on the road. You look after Omaha and Topeka and Slim. You see that they get work.
Grosvenor and Grosvenor. Custom furniture. How's that sound to you, Kathy? <laughs> <laughs>